Good morning and welcome to SJBC News. 2023 contribution statements are ready and can be picked up after service in the Fellowship Hall. Please be sure that you fill out the member contact form so that we have your current contact information on file. We thank you for your cooperation. St. John's will host the monthly preacher's meeting this Saturday, February 10th at 10 a.m. St. John's Men's Fellowship will host our annual Super Bowl Fellowship on Sunday, February 11th. Bring your family and friends to enjoy an evening of great food, fun, fellowship, and door prizes. Everyone is welcomed and encouraged to wear your favorite NFL team jersey. Tickets can be purchased in the Fellowship Hall after service. Church Women United of Plainfield and Vicinity are asking for your support to help with Share the Love with Our Community charitable event. Women United are asking for donations of canned goods, toiletries, socks, and washcloths to give to those in need in our community. There will be a box in the Fellowship Hall for you to leave your donations. The event will be held on Valentine's Day, Wednesday, February 14th at Mount Olive Baptist Church, 216 Liberty Street in Plainfield, New Jersey, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. For additional information, please see Sister Janet Jasper. St. John's will host a Valentine's Day dinner dance on Friday, February 16th at 6 p.m. The cost is just $20 per person and reservations can be made in the Fellowship Hall after service. For additional details on this event, please see Sister Tracy Barnes. Join the General Baptist Convention of New Jersey Women's Auxiliary for a motivational workshop, Sisters of Faith Stepping Up for the Lord, on Saturday, February 17th from 12 p.m. until 3 p.m. The event will take place at Calvary Missionary Baptist Church in Trenton, New Jersey, and can also be attended virtually. For additional information, please see Sister Janet Jasper. Due to the recent uptick in new strain of COVID-19, we ask that when we gather here at the church to please wear a mask. If you do not have a mask, we will have a mask available upon entry into the church building. We thank you for your cooperation. As we pray for our bereaved members and families, let us also keep in prayer the sick and the shut-in. Join us every Sunday morning at 8.30 a.m. for Sunday School. Let us gather and study the Word together. Join Pastor Wallace and the St. John's family on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. for Bible study. We will continue this lively discussion by Zoom, so be sure to have signed up to receive our emails so you are added to the weekly invite. Are you on the call? Join Pastor Wallace and the St. John's family for our weekly devotion and prayer call every Wednesday and Sunday morning at 7 a.m. Start your morning with a word from on high and be blessed by prayer. The dial-in number is 425-436-6308. Access code 312522. If you have not signed up to receive email notifications from the church, Take a moment to do so and go to our church website at www.stjohnscotchplains.org and sign up today to receive email notifications that will keep you connected with us. The work of St. John's continues because of you. We are extremely thankful for your continued financial support, whether your stewardship is during Sunday morning worship, online by simple give, Zelle, Cash App, Giveify, text, or mail to the church. We are grateful for your giving. 
If you find that our services have been a blessing to you and you have not yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so and click the subscribe button so you receive an alert when new services are posted. Additionally, if you are looking for a church home, do consider St. John's. The doors of the church are open and we welcome you in. Here at the Dome, the building has reopened and we look forward to seeing you in person. Have a blessed day. give the Lord thanks for another day. We give the Lord thanks for life, health, and strength. We give the Lord thanks for being a blessing. We thank the Lord for just being God. So we sing it. Thankful, sing it with us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We lift our voice and sing. Thank you, Lord. So we sing. Say thank you again. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, hey. Lord. Every day of my life, thank I thank you, Lord. For waking me up the same. Cause you've been so good Been so good Better than I thought you could Been so good You've been so good to me, Lord You made a way. You made a way. Out of nowhere, you made a way. Out of nowhere, you made a way. So I'm saying it. 
lift my voice and say, I just want to dance. Every day I thank you. I just want to dance. One more. I just want to. I just want to thank you, Lord. Yay. For when I was sick, Lord, you healed me. When I was sick, Lord, you healed me. When I was sick, Lord, you healed me. And I thank you all the days of my life. Come on. Oh, Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you all the days of my life. Oh, Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, I thank you all the day of my life. Say it again, oh Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, I thank you, thank you, thank you. And I thank you all the day of my life. Oh, Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, I thank you, thank you, thank you. I thank you all the day of my life. When I was sick, yeah. Lord, you healed me. When I was sick, Lord, you healed me. When I was sick, Lord, you healed me. And I thank you. And I thank you all the days of my life. Oh, Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you. When I was lost, Lord, you found me. When I was lost, Lord, you found me. When I was lost, Lord, you found me. And I thank you all the day of my life. Oh, Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you. I thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, I thank you all the day of my life. Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I thank you all the day of my life. Listen, when I was down, Lord, you raised me. When I was down, Lord, you raised me. When I was down, Lord, you raised me, and I thank you all the day of my life. Oh, oh Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you all the day of my life. Oh, Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, I thank you all the day. Say it again. Oh Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you. I thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, I thank you all the day of my life. Oh Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, I thank you all the day of my life. One more time. When I was sick, and Lord, you healed. When I was sick, Lord, you healed me. When I was sick, Lord, you healed me. And I thank you all the day of my life. Oh, Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you. Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you. I thank you all the day of my life. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I thank you all the day of my life. Praise the Lord. Oh, Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you all the day of my life. Oh, Lord, I thank you, 
Amen. Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you all the days of my life. This is the day that the Lord has made. We ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Songwriter said, I was glad. I was glad. I was happy glad. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be in the service one more time. Songwriter said he didn't have to let us live. But I'm so glad he did. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, he brought us safe thus far. And I don't know about you, but I'm happy, glad to be in the service one more time. God, we say thank you for another day's journey that you have brought us. A day that we've never seen before. And a day when it's over, we'll never see it again. Now, but while we're here, God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for our life and health and strength. Thank you for use and activity of our limbs. Thank you for having a right mind. Thank you for safe travel to your house of worship. Thank you for us the ability to give you glory, praise, and honor. Thank you for us being able to lift up your holy name. Thank you. We don't all have all of the use of our extremities like we want to, but we can lift up holy hands in the sanctuary. God, we say thank you. Hallelujah. You've been good to us. Lord, you've been better to us than we've yeah. been to ourselves. In fact, God, our testimony is if we had 10,000 tongues, yeah. we couldn't praise you enough. And so, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you, God, for this ability you've given us to come to your house of worship one more time. To see our brothers and sisters in Christ. To feel the move of your Holy Spirit. To have uh, your way in this place. And to experience you moving from heart to heart and from breast to breast. So have your way in this place. Spirit of the living God. Fall fresh on us. Melt us and mold us. Shape us and make us. Break us if you have to, Lord. But whatever you do, use us all for your service. It's in the matchless name of Jesus that we pray. Let every heart say, Amen. 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 Our scripture, our morning scripture this morning comes from Proverbs. Ought to sound familiar. Proverbs chapter 3, uh, beginning with verse 1. Proverbs 3, beginning with verse 1. My son, do not fret my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. So you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord yeah. with all your heart. And do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. And he will make straight your paths. This is the word of God for the people of God. Yeah. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our morning hymn, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory.
Good morning and welcome to SJBC News. 2023 contribution statements are ready and can be picked up after service in the Fellowship Hall. Please be sure that you fill out the member contact form so that we have your current contact information on file. We thank you for your cooperation. St. John's will host the monthly preacher's meeting this Saturday, February 10th at 10 a.m. St. John's Men's Fellowship will host our annual Super Bowl Fellowship on Sunday, February 11th. Bring your family and friends to enjoy an evening of great food, fun, fellowship, and door prizes. Everyone is welcomed and encouraged to wear your favorite NFL team jersey. Tickets can be purchased in the Fellowship Hall after service. Church Women United of Plainfield and Vicinity are asking for your support to help with Share the Love with Our Community charitable event. Women United are asking for donations of canned goods, toiletries, socks, and washcloths to give to those in need in our community. There will be a box in the Fellowship Hall for you to leave your donations. The event will be held on Valentine's Day, Wednesday, February 14th at Mount Olive Baptist Church 216 Liberty Street in Plainfield, New Jersey, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. For additional information, please see Sister Janet Jasper. St. John's will host a Valentine's Day dinner dance on Friday, February 16th at 6 p.m. The cost is just $20 per person, and reservations can be made in the Fellowship Hall after service. For additional details on this event, please see Sister Tracy Barnes. Join the General Baptist Convention of New Jersey Women's Auxiliary for a motivational workshop, Sisters of Faith Stepping Up for the Lord, on Saturday, February 17th from 12 p.m. until 3 p.m. The event will take place at Calvary Missionary Baptist Church in Trenton, New Jersey, and can also be attended virtually. For additional information, please see Sister Janet Jasper. Due to the recent uptick in new strain of COVID-19, we ask that when we gather here at the church to please wear a mask. If you do not have a mask, we will have a mask available upon entry into the church building. We thank you for your cooperation. As we pray for our bereaved members and families, let us also keep in prayer the sick and the shut-in. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. And one more time for the Holy Ghost. Amen. amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome this morning to each and every one of you. Thank God for your presence. Amen. Uh, let me share that for the month of February, we will be having Black History School on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Our guest instructor is the Reverend Dr. Carolyn Patterson from Setting the Captives Free Ministries. Um, and a couple of lesson one, rather the, uh, a copy of lesson one is already in the fellowship hall. And also that lesson is emailed or will be emailed to everyone on our mailing list. Now, if you do not receive emails from the church, I want to encourage you to go on the website, www.stjohnsscotchplains.com. Dot org. Go to where it says contact us. And if you scroll down, you'll see a section that says um, uh, where you can add your name to the email list. You put your email in, you put your name in, and immediately you're added to the email list. So if you're not receiving emails, I want to encourage you to please go to the website, go to contact us, scroll down, and slip in your email address and your, uh, your name and you will begin to get emails and receive all of the emails that come from the church. Uh, let me tell you what emails kind of come from the church to you. 
um, a me a email regarding what the Sunday school lesson was and will be. An email about what the message was that was preached. Uh, an email about Bible study, what was done in Bible study. The church say amen. An uh, email about anything special that we have going on here at the church that we need to share with everybody. An uh, email about our announcements and things that are coming up. Amen. And if you're not receiving the emails, we are trying to eliminate every excuse as to why our membership is not receiving the information that they need from the church. So it comes in an email. You can call the church. You can see it on our, our stream um, video that is on YouTube. There are a, a, a few ways for you to be able to find out everything that we're doing at the church. Amen? Amen. Amen. Don't forget, Saturday coming up is our preacher's meeting. Um, inviting all of the preachers uh, here at St. John's to come and be a part of that meeting. Uh, we'll even invite anybody who thinks that the Lord has called them to preach. Let the church say amen. If you feel like the Lord has called you to preach, come on on Saturday. And after Saturday, we'll see if the Lord still called you. Amen. Amen. Come on. Come on. Be a part of that. Don't forget that next Sunday uh, is the Super Bowl party here at St. John's. Please come and rep your football team uh, by bringing and wearing your jersey. If you don't have a favorite team, I'd like to offer you <laughs> pastor's team who just so happens to be playing in the Super Bowl, the San Francisco 49ers. Amen. So, so come on out. Come on out and say thank you, thank you. At least I got one Dallas fan that clapped, one Eagle fan that clapped, one Giant fan that clapped. Amen. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. <laughs> y'all come on out. Come on out and be. We we gonna have a good time. We gonna have a good time. Listen, listen, y'all. If I could just share this this little testimony. Uh, last last time the 49ers were, was in the Super Bowl uh, was in 2020, and. Uh, and guess who we played? The Kansas City Chiefs, right? And um, Sister Nellie Suggs. I miss Sister Nellie. Uh, Sister Nellie, Sister Nellie Suggs. You know, she, she act like she was rooting with me. That's what she acted like. It's all right, I'm good. She acted like she was rooting with me. But as soon as we lost, she was a Kansas City fan. I, I want y'all. I want y'all to know. I know she had the shirt on, but she, you know, but that's that's at the football game. Prior to the football game, oh, Pastor, we looking forward to what the 49ers gonna do. She even bought me a 49ers T-shirt. You know, like. All right, y'all. So come on out, football. Come on out for the Super Bowl. Uh, be a part. Um, it's going to be good eating, um, good fun, good fellowship. We're going to have a good time. Amen? Amen. Amen. Then don't forget uh, that we'll be having a Valentine's dance on Friday. It's not actually a Valentine's Day dance because Valentine's Day on Wednesday. We're going to have a Valentine's dance on Friday the 16th. Now, brothers and sisters, you don't have to be all booed up. To come to the dance. Wow. Amen. Because some folk feel like, oh, well, I ain't got no boo. I can't. Come. No. Come with your brothers and sisters in Christ and have a good time in the name of the Lord. Amen. We got a DJ. We got food. We got a dance floor. Amen. And we're going to have some good, clean fun for Christian folks. Amen. So come on and be a part of that event on Friday the 16th. Amen. Please bear all of the rest of our announcements in mind. Let me start by saying happy birthday to all of those born in the month of February. Amen. All the February babies, would you just stand? All the February babies, would you? Amen. Hey, oh, oh, look, hey, look, look, look. Look at the February, look, Lord, all right, Sister Jack, all right, all the February babies, any up here? Any February? All right, y'all, it's the first of the month we got to sing happy birthday to all of our February babies. Let's see which one y'all say. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Amen. Happy birthday to all the members 
born in the month of February. Amen. Are there any visitors in the house? If there are any visitors in the house, would you please stand? We just want to acknowledge your presence with us today. Any visitors? Amen. Any, any visitors? Well, thank God. Thank God we all. Oh, well, we do have visitors. Amen. God bless. God bless. Amen. Amen. Thank God for the Lord allowing you to come and be with us today. We thank God that he sent you this way. We know out of all of the churches you could have gone to, um, you decided to come here to St. John's and we thank God for that. Pray that something is heard, something is said, something is experienced in this place that will cause you to want to come back and be a part of what we've got going on here at St. John's. Amen. Again, thank you and God bless you. Amen. Amen. All right, uh, sisters and brothers, it is prayer time. It's prayer time. We'll ask everyone to stand on their feet, and if you desire, you can make your way to the altar. Uh, we believe that God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or even think. Amen. Amen. Our God is still able. How many know that we serve an able God? We serve an able God. We serve an able God. God, amen. Let us bear all of uh, those names that were listed on the screen um, who are either bereaved or sick or shut in. Uh, we're praying for all of them. Just want to add Sister Helena Williams to that list. I didn't think I saw her name, um, but she, uh, she has a procedure that needs to take place this week, and so we're praying for her as well. I believe that Deacon Jordan is coming to lead us in, in prayer this morning. Amen. 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 Good morning, church. Thank you, Father, for coming here this morning. Lord, we want to thank you for waking us up last night with the blood running warm in our body. Lord, we want to say thank you. Lord, you woke us up and dressed us, fed us, and we drove our way out to worship with you one more time. Lord, we want to say thank you. Lord, we want to say thank you for all the other things that are going on and continue in the world. Lord, we got corrected from different countries all over the world, fighting and killing. Lord, we don't need that. Just bless them and control them, the presidents and the councilmen, whatever, whoever running this. Lord, just bless them. Lord, just bless the school, the children. Protect them, shield them, guide them. Parents all upset, worried when they go to school. If they're going to come back home safe, they're kissing them before they go to school, looking out, seeing they being present. Lord, I want to th thank you. I can say thank you all morning. Lord, that cover all bases and everything. Lord, you're the good God. He is blessing me to see another year. And he gave me the opportunity to get up here to pray for your people. Lord, this bless the one that come up here and need prayer. Lord, just touch them one by one. You know their problem, what they need to be done. Lord, they'll be in your hand. I said this prayer in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Right before the choir sings, we're going to have a black history moment. Mm -hmm. And then the choir will come and sing and minister to us in song. And we will move forward in our worship. Good morning, church. <laughs> um, this is not actually a black history moment, but uh, just a few information. The theme of Black History Month 2024 is entitled African-Americans and the Arts. 
So African American art is infused with African Caribbean and the black American lived experiences here throughout the United States and across the world. African American artists have used their art to preserve history and as well as a, a way of empowerment. So we, they, <clears throat> I'm sorry, in the fields of visual, performing arts, literature, fashion, folklore, language, film, music, architecture, culture, culinary, and other forms of cultural experience, African Americans here and abroad have expressed their lives and how they have lived. Um, we missed one of the first events here in Union County, which was the flag raising at the Elizabeth um, County Courthouse. That took place on February 1st. So the African American flag, if you happen to drive past the courthouse, the African American flag is flying. <laughs> the next event here in Union County will take place on Wednesday, February 14th at 12.30 p.m., which is a virtual lunch and learn presentation. The feature speaker will be Professor Sean Smith, a photographer and filmmaker um, who is an adjunct professor at Essex County College. That will take place on Zoom. And on February 22nd at 7 p.m., a special jazz night concert will take place at the Union County Performing Arts Center and on Hamilton Stage and on Hamilton Street and Broadway. Both of these events you can sign up for. It is a free ticket for this one also. You can sign up for both events at the at www.ucnj.org slash BHM. And th the flyer um, is in the back in Fellowship Hall, Hall, Fellowship Hall also. Next week, I will come with a historical black moment. Oh 
I will sing praises. I will sing praises. Praises unto you. I will sing praises. I will sing praises. unto you. I will sing praises. I will sing praises. unto you. I will sing praises. I will sing praises. unto you. I will sing praises. unto you. I will sing praises unto you. I will sing praises unto you. I will sing praises praises unto you. I will sing praises praises unto you. I will sing praises unto you. I will sing praises unto you. I will sing praises Come on, you can sing with them. I will sing praises. I will sing praises. Praises unto I will sing praises. Come on, Pastor. I will sing praises. Praises unto you. I will sing praises. shall hide me in his tabernacle shall he hide me amen that's one of the things I used to love so much about the the music of Richard Smallwood amen all oh, his music was biblically based <laughs> amen amen they just had a special for him I think it was December of last year he celebrated his 75th and uh, 75th year of life amen and uh, they had uh, all of these choirs come in and, and sing the music, amen. And there's none like Richard Smallwood, amen. Amen. Thank God for his ministry, amen. God, we're grateful and thankful for this day. Thank you for this opportunity of sharing. Have your way in this place, we pray, Lord. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us, melt us and mold us, shape us and make us. Break us if you have to, Lord, but whatever you do, use us for your service. Some might be saved, others might be revived. We pray this prayer in the name of he who died one Friday evening, but rose triumphantly Sunday morning. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Let all of God's people say, amen, amen, amen. amen. The book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 4. Verse 6, Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 6. So we built the wall, and all the wall was joined together to half its height, for the people had a mind to work. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I want to continue talking about deliberate ministry. Deliberate ministry. Sisters and brothers, everybody ends up somewhere in life. Most don't know where they are. Some think they know, but really don't. 
then there are those few people who end up somewhere deliberately. We defined the word deliberate some weeks ago as um, something done consciously, intentionally, and on purpose. It's not something that's done without thought, but rather with contemplation and careful consideration. People who end up somewhere on purpose doing things deliberately are normally those who reason carefully in order to reach a decision or a conclusion. They take the necessary time to adequately evaluate where they are and where they desire to be. And normally, these people who have the ability to think about and deliberately plan for their futures with imagination and wisdom are people with vision. Vision gives guidance and direction for our lives. Serves as a road map. It helps to put us on the right track while helping to show us the right way. Vision provides that push that we need in order to get through. Vision is the focus needed to navigate through life's challenges and life's circumstances. Vision is that necessary element that helps us to reach our desired end. Vision is the key component to doing deliberate ministry so that the kingdom of God continues to grow. And without vision, our passion will pass. Our progress will cease. Our potential will wither. Our power will weaken. Our purpose will fade. And our people will perish. According to Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. Without vision, families perish. Children perish. Communities perish. Local churches perish perish. Our people will perish. That's why we need to be doing deliberate ministry. You see, that word perish found in Proverbs infers that apart from vision, people run around wild, undisciplined, uncontrollable, unteachable, and unchangeable. It means a lack of constraint, a lack of restraint, a lack of accountability, a lack of responsibility, a lack of structure, and a lack of cohesion. When there's no vision, we will be content with just surviving and not thriving. When there's no vision, we will make choices to do things that really have no meaning, no basis, and no real direction. When there's no vision, we will continue to execute that which has no purpose, exhibit no perseverance, and will end up experiencing no progress. When there's no vision, we will become satisfied with being popular as opposed to being powerful. You see, being popular may get folks to praise us and uplift us. But being powerful will get folks to praise God and lift up Jesus. Being popular may get us into some things for free. But being powerful will help to set the captives free. Being popular comes as a result of the achievements of men. But being powerful comes as a result of the anointing of God. Where there's no vision, people get comfortable right where they are. They become complacent with whatever they're doing and suffer from being careless with whatever they've been given. And when we are careless with what we have, we'll lose what we have. And I offer today that the reason why God's people are not further along The reason why the kingdom is not being realized, the reason why our hopes have been dashed and our dreams have been dismantled, our direction has been detoured and our destiny has been delayed is because of the lack of vision. Someone said that vision is foresight with insight based on hindsight. In other words, it's the ability to see ahead of us 
through the corrective lenses of that which was behind us. Thank God for where we came from, but if we continue to do the same things the same way that we've always done it over and over again, we'll never be kingdom builders. We'll remain stuck in the same place that we've always been. That's uh, why we need to do ministry deliberately. George Barna says that vision for ministry is a reflection of what God wants to accomplish through us in order to build up his kingdom. The only problem is that we spend so much time trying to build our own individual kingdoms that the kingdom of God remains unbuilt. Vision is the God-given ability to see possible solutions to the seemingly impossible situations of life. I know it seems impossible, but the Bible says that all things are possible through Christ that strengthens us. Vision is the ability to see beyond the surface of human potential. It's not about where we are right now. But it's about where God wants us to be. That's why we need to do this deliberate ministry. There's a Japanese proverb, brothers and sisters, that says that vision with no action is a daydream. Action with no vision is a nightmare. And sadly, many of us end up stuck between a daydream and a nightmare. Either way, we're stuck in an unconscious state of our own imaginations. There are some folks that have the ability to see, but they're too scared to act. Then there are those who are so busy acting without having visualized anything. That's a dangerous situation to be in because we make what is in our imagination our reality and we end up sleepwalking, oblivious to what's really taking place around us. But I, I, I got news today. If, if we're going to be people of God who do deliberate ministry, um, the ones who are vision minded, it's going to require us to wake up out of our unconscious state, open up our eyes to the reality of what's going on around us, and then we got to do something. Yeah. Nehemiah was a visionary instructed by God to do deliberate ministry in Jerusalem. Long story short, God's people disobeyed God. Sin put them into captivity. As a result of sin and disobedience, God allowed the Babylonians to come and conquer his people. Under the leadership of King Nebuchadnezzar, the temple was destroyed and the surrounding walls had been burned down. After the Babylonians came the Persians. The king of Persia gave some folk permission to go back and rebuild the temple and the city that was in Ezra. Though the temple was rebuilt, attempts to rebuild the walls were frustrated by the enemies of Judah and the city of Jerusalem remained in ruins. The temple had been built, but the walls had been breached. The city had been destroyed. The gates had been burned down. I submit that we too are in the same predicament as the people of God in this Old Testament story. We've got temples that have been built. We've got churches on practically every corner. But the walls of the city have been destroyed. The buildings are standing, but the remnant that's left in captivity is in great affliction and great reproach. We've got programs, but no ministries. We've got services, but no worship experiences. We come to church and sometimes never encounter God. We've got religion, but no relationship. We hear sermons with no messages. The walls have been breached. The city has been destroyed. The gates have been burned down. And the people of God have become a reproach. A reproach means look down upon, 
discredited, disgraced, shamed, scorned. The church has become a reproach. The greatness of God's people was no more. The awesomeness of God's protection had seemingly been destroyed with the walls. And I stopped by on my way to glory to share with somebody that God wants to know where are the people who are going to be willing to do deliberate ministry? But where are the people who can see beyond their present condition into a prepared future that God has in store for us? Where are those who will help bring back integrity to the church? Where are those who will help to regain the respect that we once had? Where are those who will help to shake off the reproach and restore the honor, the dignity, and the power that belongs to the people of God. Where are the workers? Thank God for Nehemiah. Um, his name means the Lord comforts. <laughs> ne Nehemiah's visionary efforts brought comfort to the people in a great time of need. And isn't it just like God to send exactly what we need at our greatest points of need. That was a good place to shout right there. Songwriter put it this way. He may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. His comfort comes at their greatest point of need. And Nehemiah had a vision for deliberate ministry and then Nehemiah put that vision into action. According to the text, if you're taking notes, <clears throat> deliberate ministry, first of all, takes revelation. The Bible says in the first chapter of Nehemiah, that word got to Nehemiah from, um, from Hanani and other brothers of Judah of the condition of the remnant left in Judah. Nehemiah's eyes, it says, were opened and he saw the reality of what was going on around them. Walls flat. Gates burn. Morale low. Future fuzzy. Ruin and reproach. Jerusalem was in shambles and where there had once been great glory, there's nothing but disgrace. The place where God's presence was experienced, the place where God would be glorified and magnified, the place where God dwelt and moved and had his being was now in ruin. My brothers and sisters, deliberate ministry starts with seeing. And I wonder, do you see what I see? Um. I see church buildings closing. I, I see dead men and women walking. I see the miseducation of our children. I see the injustice of our justice system. I see heartache, heartbreak, anxiety, and depression. Do you see what I see? I see folks talking about heaven, but living like hell and about to bust hell wide open. I see the ills of society. I see demonic influence on every hand. I see right being compromised and wrong being glorified. I see people settling for mediocrity instead of striving for excellence. Do you see what I see? And instead of us doing something about it, we spend all our time playing church and not being the church. We'd rather be massaged by Sunday morning motivational speakers rather than agitated by the messengers of the almighty God. What we hear on Sunday morning ought to encourage us to evaluate our lives. It ought to make us take a good look at ourselves in the mirror 
It ought to make us think about where we are as opposed to where God wants us to be. And then it ought to help offer us a plan in order to get where God desires for us to be. We'd rather feel good than be challenged to change. We'd rather be coddled rather than to be corrected. We'd rather condone sin rather than confront it. We'd rather just be comfortable rather than being challenged to change. We spend all our time talking about what God can do. We spend all our time quoting our favorite scriptures from memory and spend little to no time standing on the promises of our God. I'm in trouble. We push our own agendas, our own programs, and sometimes lose sight of the real needs. The world is hurting. Our churches are suffering. Our people are perishing. Oh, the world is hungry for the living bread. Lift the Savior up for them to see. Trust him and do not doubt the words he said. I'll draw all men. Do you see what I see? That's revelation. But then deliberate ministry also takes internalization. Are y'all still with me here? Not only did Nehemiah see the need, but uh, it also got in his spirit. And he felt the need. I was... Uh, and I stopped out to tell somebody that there is no vision without passion. Bible says that Nehemiah sat down and he wept and he mourned and he fasted and he prayed. Let me say that again. Nehemiah sat down and he wept and he mourned and he fasted and he prayed. They tell me that the third time is the charm. Nehemiah sat down and he wept and he mourned and he fasted. And he prayed, and I don't know how you feel about it, but the load that is felt can never be lifted and lightened unless we first feel the pressure of the load on our souls. When we see something, something begins to happen on the inside of us. God help those that see something and just want to keep on moving. God, help those that see injustice and just want to be all right with it. God, help those that see wrong. Are y'all with me here? And then just say, well, as long as it ain't on my street or as long as it ain't about me, I'm just going to let. No! We'll never fully experience the power of really being used by God. Until God has opened up our hearts and we felt the sorrow of everything that's going on around us. You remember we shared a few weeks ago that even after doing all that Jesus did, he turned and had compassion on the people because he saw a multitude of people without a shepherd. And then he went on to say that the harvest is plentiful. But the laborers are few. My brothers and sisters, if we can't feel it like Jesus felt it, something's wrong. Some of us need to first sit down and weep over the ruins in our own souls, in our own families. In our church, in our cities, in our communities. And after we have mourned and struggled with it and wept, then we can appreciate that weeping only endures for the night, but joy comes in the morning. But that, that scripture means nothing if you haven't sat with it. I wish I had somebody. 
that's had to sit with some things and it saturate them in their soul. And sometimes you don't know what's going on, but tears come to your eyes and you're like, Lord. See, my sisters and brothers, it's not, it's not just their problem. It's our problem. It's not them versus us. What did Dr. King say? Uh, we are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied by a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. That's, that's internalization. But delivery ministry takes revelation. Somebody say revelation. revelation. Internalization. Internalization. But then watch this. It takes dissemination. Yeah, yeah. After we see it and after we feel it, only then can we share it. But here's the problem. We got to be careful that we share it with God first. Before we share it with everybody. Uh -huh. See, too often we plan first and consult God later. And then expect God to just go along with what we plan. But Nehemiah teaches us that if we don't plan to fail, then we need to consult God first before we plan. We need to pray first, hear from God, and let God speak to us first. Check one, two. I'm sorry. I'm putting y'all to sleep. Y'all forgive me. When we seek God first in prayer, God goes to work on us in order to prepare us for the fulfillment of the vision and the building of the kingdom. Y'all missed, that was a good reason to shout. Um, here it is. We have to realize that sometimes the vision for doing deliberate ministry will exceed our ability. But prayer helps prepare us for the task ahead of us and it moves the hand of God to work behind the scenes to make straight the path. I wish. We may not always see or even know how it's going to work out, but rest assured, God is in the background working it because all things work together for good to them who love the Lord, to them called. According to his purpose. Simply put, for every God-given vision, God provides the provision. What prayer does, it helps make the vision clearer. So that after we have shared it with God, only then can we share it with the people around us. And God will give it to us so that we can write it plain. So that they can read it and run with it. Let me. Followers find a leader and then grab hold of the vision. But leaders... Grab hold of the vision and then find the followers. Oh, okay. As a leader, we have to know what we're working on before God can give us who to work with. All right, let me get out of here. <clears throat> Deliberate ministry takes revelation. Somebody say revelation. Takes internalization. It takes dissemination. And only then can we experience realization. Okay, here it is. Here's the realization that even after we have seen it, and even after we have felt it, 
And even after we have shared it with God and others, only then will we be empowered to do something about it. If we make ourselves available, God will make us able. Whatever the situation may be, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get out of here. Whatever the circumstance in our lives, <clears throat> whatever we may be dealing with or going through, if we avail ourselves to God, God will make us able. And if we want to do deliberate ministry, <clears throat> And if we want to build the kingdom of God, then we need to make ourselves available to God. Lord, I'm available to you. My heart, I give you. You can do what you want to do with it. Use me, Lord, to show someone the way. And enable me to say my storage is empty. And I am available to you. I'm yours, Lord. Everything I've got everything I am everything I'm not I'm yours Lord try me now and see see if I can be completely yours and when we make ourselves available God will make us able can I call the roll this morning Abraham was available and God made him able Moses was available and God made him able Rahab was available and God made her able. Gideon was available and God made him able. The three Hebrew boys were available and God made them able. Daniel and Ezra, Nehemiah were available and God made them able. David was available and God made him able. Mary was available and God made her able. Jesus was available and God made him able. Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sin far away. Rising, he justified freeing me forever. One day, one day, one day he's coming back. Glorious day. And if we avail ourselves, uh, God will make us able. We, we may not be the biggest. We may not be the wealthiest. We may not be the strongest. We may not be the most popular. We may not be considered one of the best. But if St. John's is available, God will make us able. My pastor used to tell this story all the time. This story between feel, will, and way. I think y'all heard it before. Feel, will, and way went on a journey together. They got to a river, and Phil looked at Will and said, I don't feel like rowing a boat across this river. I don't feel like swimming to the other side. Will looked at Phil, and Wade spoke to Will and said, if you have the will, I'll make the way. And they were able to cross over the river. Phil, Will, and Way got to a mountain. And you know what Phil said. I don't feel like climbing this mountain. Way looked at Will and said, if you have the will, I'll make a way. And while they were standing there, Way dug a tunnel through the mountain. I wish I had somebody. The question was, I know who feel is, <laughs> because feel is the seat of our emotions. And y'all know how our emotions betray us on this journey. Will is the seat of our consciousness. 
But the problem is sometimes we are so uh, academically grand that we're no earthly good. So the question is, who is way in this story? The hymn writer picks up and helps us and says, have you any river that seems uncrossable? Have you any mountain you cannot tunnel through? God specializes in things that seem impossible. And he will do what no other power but holy power can do. Deliberate ministry takes revelation. It takes internalization. It takes dissemination then we can experience realization that causes for a celebration. Because here's the celebration point. We don't have to wait till the battle is over. We can shout right now. I'll tell you why, because we've already got the victory. Victory, victory shall be mine. I told Satan, Get behind because victory today is mine. Everybody standing. Deliberate realization, internalization, dissemination leads to a realization that causes a celebration. Sisters and brothers, that's why I'm excited about what God is doing. Y'all, y'all, because... I, I'm, listen, there, there may be no need to be excited right now. But can I tell y'all, if y'all could see what I see, you'd get excited. Because it has not yet appeared what things shall be. Uh, but God, who is able, will do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or even think. <sighs> Deliberate. I mean, there may be somebody here who is outside of the ark of safety. And after hearing Nehemiah's story that um, is synonymous to our story, you, you, you may need to reconsider your lot in life. If you're not saved, you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior. I wouldn't wait. Tomorrow's not promised. The next second of breath we breathe is not promised. Don't put off for tomorrow what you can do today. I don't feel like it. Well, way is saying if you got the will, eh, I'm going to make the way. Is there one today? Is there one? I wouldn't wait. Tomorrow's not promised to us unsaved. You've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Listen, I'd love for you to be able to go to heaven and say, I'm a member of St. John's and Scotch Plains. And they're going to be like, yep, and? Because more importantly, you need to be a member of the body of Christ so that your name is in the Lamb's book of life. Ooh, I can't wait to do some teaching on that. Is there one today? Is there, is there one? All right, maybe, maybe you're already saved, but you're not a member of any church where Jesus is Lord. The Bible is the instruction manual. The Holy Spirit leads and guides all the way. If that's you today, um, and you feel the Lord tugging at your heart, because I still believe that none come unless the Father draws them. If, if you feel the Lord tugging at your heart, respond today. What did he say in Revelations? He says, behold, I stand at your door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open up the door and receive me, I'll come in and sup with them and them with me. If you open up that door that the Lord is knocking on and you respond to what the Lord is drawing you to, God said he'll come in. Jesus said he'll come in and sup with you well with you. Is there one today? Is there one? Is there one? God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you 
Thank you for being God and God all by yourself. Thank you, God, for Nehemiah's story of how the people got to the point where they had a mind to build only after they were able to see and to feel and to share it and internalize it and disseminate the, the, what was going on, God. That's when they had a mind to work. So, God, we thank you for allowing us to prepare to do and to continue to do deliberate ministry. I pray that you will touch the hearts and minds of your people, that they too will have a mind to work. Lord, if there's anyone here that's in the valley of indecision, Lord, I pray that you prick their heart even now, for we know that none come unless you draw them. So draw us nearer, our, nearer our God to thee. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Let every heart say amen, amen. and amen. amen, and thank God, amen. Come on and give God some praise in this. You may be seated in the presence of God, amen. At this time, we have some folks here who have completed new members class, but have yet to receive the right hand of fellowship, amen. I know I saw Sister Morgan, amen, come on. Amen. Has anybody else completed the classes but have not received the right hand of fellowship? Amen. I know we got a, we got a, we got a class full of them upstairs. Amen. I can't wait to come on. Come on and stand right here in front of us. Amen. 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 Anyone else? Amen. Look, Lord, I am, I'm excited for what the Lord is doing. Amen. And it's marvelous in our sight. Well, it's marvelous in my sight. I can't speak for everybody else. But I would hope that it's marvelous in all of our sight. Amen. Because even the angels are rejoicing over one that comes. Amen. And if one comes, we too ought to get excited about what the Lord is doing. Amen. 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 Uh, Sister Morgan. Sister Morgan Belvin, we thank you for allowing the Lord to lead you to this place. Um, and we thank God that you have been coming a long time. Amen. And, um, you, and, and let me stop right there if I can. Amen. That's another thing that I can appreciate is that, you know, some folks don't come just out of emotion. Check one, two. You know, one of the questions, one of the questions, um, I was doing a class in, um, I forgot, re, re, restructuring Christian education or something. Um, and they said, how do we stop the back door uh, issue in the church? I said, well, well, part of the way we got to stop that is teaching people. Check one, check two. I tell people all the time, thank you for coming up, but now go through the new members class. Maybe you don't want to stay. And that's all right. That's all right if you don't want It's all right. But at least as we teach people, it gives us a better opportunity to keep people from going out that back door. Because the truth is, watch this, y'all. When you come to church, there are some people in church that will welcome you in the front door and push you out the back. I, I'm, I'm just, so no one person think I'm looking at them. I'm just going to turn and look at everybody, you know. And I'm not even going to look you in the eye. I'm just going to look, you know, just look, just look. But that's what happens in our churches. Amen? But I'm, I'm going to tell you what helps to close that door is when teaching is taking place. Amen? And when people understand that we don't come to church for people. We, we, we come because of our relationship with the Lord. Can I tell y'all, that's what keeps me coming. <laughs> Sister Bell, when we thank you for coming... Thank you for allowing the Lord to lead you. We offer you the right hand of uh, fellowship today, um, and you are a full member of St. John's Baptist Church. Because of COVID, we don't have, you know, before we used to have all of our leaders come around and shake your hand stuff, but, you know, be careful now. So I'm going to come and shake your hand because um, I ain't got COVID. <laughs> today, thank you. <laughs> I know I ain't got it today. Um, but we thank you so much for coming. We thank you for the Lord leading you to this place. And we look forward to you continuing to do ministry here. Thank God for you. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. All right. Do y'all know? I need to, I need to go. Um, 
You know, giving a mic to a preacher is like saying sick them to a dog. I, 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 it, it's, it's just, you know, maybe I don't, because, you know, I, I could go on. Y'all know, that, y'all, y'all know that come to Bible study. Y'all know how I just be, I get excited and I just keep talking. And the next thing I know, I'm like, oh, Lord, it's 805, 810, 815. My Lord. Amen. So, all right. Oh, oh wait, 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 wait. Shh, shh. Hey, glory. What, what, what somebody else say? Somebody. My Lord, listen, I love it. I love it. I love it. To be honest with you, I love teaching more than anything else. Amen. And so I'm grateful for the opportunity to be able to do that. Amen. 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 All right. Uh, let us prepare our hearts and minds to uh, receive communion. Um, has everyone been served that desires to be served? I uh, know there are several people with their hands raised. Anybody on this side that, amen. I think it's one or two. Raise them high, please. Thank you. Over there. Thank you. Thank you. Cherish the old rugged till I lay down. Amen. I will cling. Amen. First Corinthians eleven twenty three through 26 says, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. And that evening, Jesus took the bread, and after he had blessed it, he broke it and said, This is my body, broken for many. Take it. Eat all of it. Let us eat together. After they ate together, uh, Jesus took the wine, and after he blessed it, he gave it and said, This is my blood, the blood of the New Testament. Take it, drink ye all of it. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, let every heart say, Amen. Amen. Listen, we're going to sing that song. They went out after they ate together. And drank together singing a hymn out to, to the Mount of Olives. And we don't know what hymn they sung. But we do know that there is power, that there is power in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Come on, let's prepare to leave this place and sing together. There is power. There is power. Power. Wonder working power in the blood. In the precious blood of the Lamb, there is power, power. Oh, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder 
working power in the prayer. Amen. As we prepare to leave this place, but never from God's presence, don't forget that the ways of giving are on the screen. If you desire to give electronically, there are ways to give on the screen. Um, if you have a tangible gift that you'd like to give before you leave the sanctuary, we will have trustees at the doors to receive your gift. Can I tell y'all, brothers and sisters, you can't beat God giving no matter how hard you try. God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for every gift and every giver. We pray that no one ever go wanting for supporting ministry. As we prepare to leave this place, but never your presence, help us to remember, God, that there is power, wonder work and power in the blood of the Lamb that empowers us to do deliberate ministry in this present age. Keep your people, we pray, and now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us now, henceforth, and forevermore. Let every heart say amen, say amen, and thank God. Come on, as we sing going out, there's power in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, oh, oh.